2014. There's been lots published about it by the by the people who really coined the term red S. But this is straight from their their study, the potential effects of reds. Not just, you know, stuff that we think of from athletes like decreased muscle strength and endurance performance, but depression, Mm -hmm. irritability, um, decreased concentration, decreased coordination, impaired judgment, you know, increased injury risk. And so, like I said, we think of some of the sports stuff in a bubble in regards to athletes. But what I love about the fact that this female athlete tried has been taken to the new to a new level by the International Olympic Committee um, is that they've expanded who can suffer from this. And it's not just female athletes. It's now male athletes. And it's not just athletes. It's men and women who wow. are over-exercising and not eating enough or because they're trying to follow the latest fad are under-fueling themselves. And they're starting to have like many of us do, irritability, mm-hmm. depression, blood sugar swings, moodiness. They, they're they working out in the gym wondering why they're not adding muscle. They keep getting injured. So um, I spend a lot of time lecturing about this because it is where I think we can make the biggest impact when it comes to not only our student athletes' health, health but our health as adults as well. Well, let me ask you this. Why don't more coaches, trainers, uh, radio hosts, <laughs> and physical therapists, because I'd never heard this term before either, know more about REDS, R-E-D-S? Well, it just really kind of came out in the in 2014. So I think it's honestly just a lack of education. That's why I've really dedicated a lot of my time at Fueling Champions to educating, like training the trainer, literally, because mm-hmm. you can trainers and coaches that work with athletes and are and people firsthand will start to see the warning signs of this right away. You're you keep coming in sore to workouts. You're tired. You're dragging all of the time. You're grouchy. And so trainers and people that are with people all the time, you know, um, physical therapists working with people in physical therapy, they're on the front lines. And the the data shows that less than 50% of them even know what REDS is. And they vaguely remember something about the the female athlete triad, but they they oftentimes can't even name what the the triad components Mm -hmm. are. So it's education. It's lack of continuing education. It's the fact that they're not trained in nutrition, because this is a fundamental nutrition problem. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have the skill set to question it and then know how to fix it, for lack of better terms. And so we need a team approach to address people. And even in medicine, we're still very segmented. And very few doctors even have a dietitian in their office, let alone a nutritionist. It's like, this is 2018, people. I I still don't understand that. Yeah. And and you and I think of Cassie Bjork. She walked away from her dietitian uh, degree or uh, with the American Dietitian Association because she felt like they were giving bad advice, basically. And so you do have, you know, a lot of controversy out there when it comes to what we should be eating in order to uh, just just perform at our, our highest level no matter what you do uh, and what your age. So you've been at this for almost 20 years and you say there are four common behaviors that are leading to energy deficiency, especially in student athletes. What are they and how can we correct them? The premise of low energy availability is you're just not eating enough food, period. So just generally okay. you're not eating enough calories. And I think a lot of us, especially women, I'm going to call us out, are really keen to this because Somewhere in our brain, we're we're still very self conscious about getting fat or you know not looking a certain way, and so we are just minimizing. We think, oh, we still have that. If I eat less, I'm going to look a certain way. So the mm-hmm. first thing is we're not eating enough. And athletes is that they need an abundance abundance of calories, student athletes, because they're growing. Right. They're, they have metabolic processes on top of that. Oh, and then they're training for two or three hours every day of the week. So they need an abundance of calories. They're not eating enough. After that, it's then, okay, what are they eating? So it's of that, they're not eating enough protein. That's the first place I go. They're not eating enough protein spread throughout the day. We talk a lot about protein and why we need it, but it's basically what helps you maintain your metabolism. Mm -hmm. Our our metabolism is in our muscle, the mitochondria in our muscle, and protein's job is to help with maintenance and addition of lean body mass, not to mention it's good for hair, skin, immune system, repairing the body at times of need, making our mood chemicals. So we need consistent and take a good protein. quality food. Yeah, I don't care if it's plant based or animal based. We're not going to get into that. It's just not enough protein day in and day out. Mm-hmm. The third thing is just well, and there's protein in things that you don't even realize, like yeah. like oatmeal. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you just have to you have to just Do take it homework. all into account. I have a yeah. free handout on my website on the coaches page if you want to get it that tells you how to calculate your protein needs, how to calculate your caloric needs. 
the third, especially with student athletes, is they're not eating enough at the right time, specifically at breakfast and specifically after school before training. Mm. Many people don't eat breakfast. And okay, if you're going to do intermittent fasting, you're an adult, gonna you're going to you. choose that. That's fine. But when we're talking about kids, kids should not be fasting. Right. They're growing, they're training, they're competing, and they're doing other things like getting ready to have a period. Mm-hmm. They need to have calories to do all of that. Yeah. And so they need breakfast and they need a hearty snack after school before training. And many of them just roll into training with nothing or maybe just a granola bar. And that's not enough yeah. for a lot of these kids. And they the need last, the protein. Yeah. The last one is under hydration. We talk mm. a lot about this. It's not directly a fuel source, but just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about dehydration and its effects on the brain. It's almost immediate. Mm-hmm. And so just drinking half your body weight in ounces every day goes a long way to just energetically fueling yourself to be at your best. I'm checking everybody's water in the room. Everybody's got their, I don't have my water today. I, I don't. I'm, I'm bad. It's okay. in my car. It's in my car. I do have water, but it's in my car. That's all right. I'll drink it and refill it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it. Here's a tip from pass. here's a tip from Burn. If you drink it out of a glass bottle or uh, uh, like a, the or the stainless steel one, especially glass, I feel like I want to drink more. I don't know why. It just goes down easier. Everybody should know what they like to drink down out of. Down the hatch. Down the hatch. Absolutely. All right, everyone. We got to go. Uh, we're out of time. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. You get one body. You get one mind. And you get one life. Get out there today and make the most of it. Imagine you're in a room surrounded by animals. There are about two dozen chickens, one cow, one pig, one turkey, and about a dozen fish. You spend some time with the animals, getting to know them one by one. You quickly learn that each has a unique personality. You meet Sally, a chicken who purrs like a cat when petted. Jasmine, a cow whose favorite snacks are apples. Louie, a pig who seems smarter than your dog. Pearl, a turkey who loves to sunbathe, and Max, a fish who enjoys belly rubs. Before you leave the room, someone tells you, these are the very animals who will be killed for your food this year. Unless, that is, you decide to save them. Will you? This is Jill with the One Life Radio Fueling Champions Minute. Did you know magnesium is a cofactor in more than 300 enzyme systems that regulate diverse biochemical reactions in the body, including protein synthesis, muscle and nerve function, blood glucose control, and blood pressure? Magnesium is required for energy production, oxidative phosphorylation, and glycolysis. That's a mouthful. How do you know if you're getting enough? Signs and symptoms of possible magnesium deficiency include restless leg syndrome, agitation, insomnia, muscle stiffness, cramping, and aches. Well, where do you find magnesium? Food sources include raw almonds, leafy greens like cooked spinach and chard, raw cashews, pumpkin seeds, black beans, avocados, and my favorite, dark chocolate. Don't forget those Epsom salt baths and be smart about supplementation. This has been the One Life Radio Fueling Champions Minute. Hi, I'm Ashley Grace, co-founder of H-Hemp Company. Hemp CBD improved my life so much that I started a company to help others naturally feel better. You don't have to have had a severe brain injury like me to benefit from H-Hemp Company products. If you're struggling to feel better, calm your brain, or better deal with daily stress and want to do so naturally, please try H-Hemp Company products. Search H Hemp Company and use code OLR for 20% off and free shipping. That's H Hemp Company and code OLR to feel better naturally and calm your brain. Sun Warrior believes that plants provide the cleanest and most powerful foods, rich in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and phytonutrients. Our bodies crave real foods, especially in this age where we heavily process everything we eat, stripping out all of the benefits and nutrition well before we have a chance to even use them. Illuminate your body, mind, and the planet with Sun Warrior. To learn more, visit them at sunwarrior.com. That's sunwarrior.com.